Hello friends, welcome to today's video. In this video, I am going to talk about method overloading. What is method overloading? What is the purpose of method overloading? And why is so important? And along with that, I will give you the real implementation of method overloading in real world example. So the very first point is, what is method overloading? In the Java, we have the concept of class. Class can contain n numbers of methods and the variables. So suppose when the class having more than one method with the same name but the changing signature then it is called method overloading. So you might be wonder what is the meaning of changing signature is. So change in the signature means change in the number of parameters or change in the sequence of parameters or change in the data type of the parameters while calling the method. Either we can pass any type of things if any of these conditions fulfilled then the, it become the case of method, method overloading. Alright friends, we saw what are the definitions and what are the conditions required to fulfill the method overloading concept. Now come into the real time implementation. Where we are using it? What are the real world examples? So before going into that, I would like you to consider a one class. Yes, one class, the name of the class is shopping portal. And that class contains three overloaded overloaded method having the named make payment. Okay, and all these three uh, myth make make payment methods consider accept the different number of parameters or different data type of parameters. So now we can say this class having the three overloaded method. We have designed one class having the three overloaded method, and the name of that method is make payment. Now come to the forward. Consider a one shopping portal. Okay, you, you have to consider one shopping portal, any of the portal from the internet. So you have to purchase some items. What is your going to be the first step? You first visit to that portal and you will select, obviously you will select that item whatever you want to purchase. But at the end, what you are going to do, you have to do the payment. So once you go to the payment page, there are various modes of doing the payments. They might be asked to do the payment by using the Paytm or internet banking or the credit card or debit card. You have three options, but uh, there are different and the purpose of doing the thing is same. You are going to do the payment. Now consider this thing like for the first scenario, consider that you are going to do the payment by Paytm. What is the very first step you should, what are the very first essential data required for that? You should have the registered mobile number to that Paytm. So once you have the registered mobile number, so you will enter there and all the bank details and everything is associated, already associated with that mobile number. So once you enter that and click on the submit button, so it will go and trigger one method which is in the back end or we can say in the behind the scene one method and that method is what make payment method which is already we define in a class in the class shopping portal. So once you click on the submit button a one method in the back end or behind the scene got triggered. What is that method? That method name is make payment. And that method will accept the parameter you are passing as a mobile number. Mobile numbers should be considered as a one parameters and it will accept by that method, make payment and perform the business logic. So this is the one way. Now come to this another way. We have the another way of doing the payment. For example, select the internet banking. What are the important things required for internet banking? We must have the username and the password. And that username and the password should be associated with some particular bank. Once you enter and click on the submit, the same method will get triggered. So like make payment, again make payment method got triggered. But this time the method name might be same, but it is different. We, I told you earlier that we already defined three methods in the same class, but they will accept the different arguments depending upon the what how many numbers of the parameters or the data type we are passing it. So for this case, we are passing two parameters, username and the password. So it will go and trigger the make 
payment method which accept the two parameters two arguments as a parameter so once it get accept and it will execute the business logic written in that method not the previous one previous previous one is different it will only accept the one parameters so this this time the make payment which having the capacity to accept the two parameters get triggered so this is the second scenario all right we already saw the two ways of doing the payment now come to the third way what is the third way we have the another way of doing the payment by using the credit card or debit card but here we have to think once again what is the uh, parameters or what is the essential data is required to proceed for the payment here we should requires four important data what are they the first one is you you must have the card number you must have the cbb number you must have the what otp you must have the expiry date of that credit card or the debit card so you must have these four essential uh, in data to fulfill or to proceed the payment so once you enter and click on the submit button the again it will go and trigger the method which already defined in the same class but it but this time it will accept four parameters so we already constructed a one method name make payment for accepting the four parameters so once it will reach there it will accept the four parameters and perform the same type business logic whatever we written in that so you can see here we are doing the same thing we are doing the payment business we are doing the same thing payment but the method which got executed it is changing accordingly what are what are the number of the parameter we are sending so this is because basically the real time implementation or real world implementation of method overloading all right friends we already saw what are the real world example now come to the real time example in java what are is there any overloaded method which already predefined in any class yes we have the overloaded method so in the java we have one class called print stream which contains 10 overloaded method of print ln print ln yes print ln you might be used so many times in so many places like system dot or dot print ln what are the purpose of print ln is to print the output in the console so have you ever notice even you pass the int value even you pass the float you pass the character you pass the object at each time it will print some type of the value in the console it will never complain you it like it will never give you the compilation error do you know why this is happening because in the print stream class which is the predefined class it already contain the 10 overloaded method of the same name like print ln so it can accept any type of data type you are passing in that method so if you passing the int so it will go in the print stream class and it will trigger that print print ln method which is capable of accepting the int data type so like that if you pass the string it will go and trigger that method which is capable of accepting the string and perform the further business logic so this is the real time implementation in java which is already present in the print stream class All right friends I tried to explain you in the very simple words but if you still having any problem or if you having any query please do comment in the comment box I will love to answer your query as soon as possible So yeah thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any query please feel free to comment in the comment box Thank you so much for watching this video